This tank in the video can be thought of as the Stonehenge or the Parthenon of wave power, the place where everything began. It's the wave tank at the University of Edinburgh. I like to think about them like it's like the keyboard of a piano. Instead of um, you playing the keyboard, it's actually a computer that controls the, the different, uh, different paddles. This, uh, this wave maker are not only capable of creating waves, but also to, uh, they're also capable to absorb them. If you want as little uh, reflection as possible to have the, the cleanest wave as possible. Back in the 70s, Professor Steven Salter began to experiment with wave power here. And to the astonishment of many, he came up with a prototype called the Duck that actually showed that wave power could work. But then came the early 80s, and Margaret Thatcher ordered that wave power programs be halted. Ian Bryden, who runs the Renewable Energy Department at the University of Edinburgh, then pulled a fast one. He dismantled the tank, but then reformed a group called Renewable Energy and Coastal Defense. With the military overtures, he was given money to rebuild the tank, which is the one you see in the video. In fact, a lot of the parts were taken from the first tank and used to build this one. The funding of the programs limped along until a few years ago when everyone realized that wave and tidal power may be part of our future. Here, if you look, especially here, you can start to see a, a standing wave pattern. It seems really to move just up and down, no travel anymore. Now I'm going to switch off the wave makers and you'll see literally within seconds the, the water is still again. I think it's fair to say that modern research started, started here. Yeah. With that piece of wood, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's balsa wood. How far has wave power come? The tank you see in the video actually is going to be dismantled. In its place, the government's going to build a tank that will simulate both waves and tides. 